My pineapple cobbler with fresh pineapple and pie crust recipe is an easy way to make an old fashioned dessert from scratch. The secret to this Southern style cobbler is making the filling with fresh pineapple, not canned. So whether you use a homemade pie crust or a store-bought crust, your cobbler is going to turn out delicious. The first step in this cobbler is making the filling. And here in this pot, I have three cups or 24 ounces or 680 grams of fresh pineapple. I actually cut it up and froze it yesterday. So you could do that ahead of time or you could even cheat, shall we say, and buy frozen pineapple. You could even use totally fresh pineapple and just cut it up when you're going to make the filling. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to use canned because canned is nowhere near as flavorful. Whether you use fresh or frozen is not going to change the recipe that much. We have to cook the pineapple and if you use frozen, it's going to take a little bit longer for the filling to come to a boil, but that's the only difference. I'm also going to add sugar to the pineapple. I am going to add one cup or 210 grams of plain white sugar. I know a lot of people like to use brown sugar with pineapple and you definitely can, but I want this pineapple cobbler to have a yellow filling and I think that if I use brown sugar, it's not going to look as yellow. So I'm going to stick with white. I'm also going to add one tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice and one teaspoon. Honestly, this is a little bit over a teaspoon, but one teaspoon of lemon zest. If you don't have zest, add half of a teaspoon of lemon extract. I know this might look a bit odd, but the lemon is really going to bring out the pineapple flavor and this cooked pineapple filling in the cobbler is going to taste even more like pineapple than the fresh pineapple does. I'm also going to add some water. Here I have one cup or 240 grams of water. Whenever you're cooking fruit, whether it's fresh or frozen, you need a little bit of water so that it doesn't burn. But also pineapple is not as juicy as say strawberries or blueberries. So I do think I need to add a little bit of liquid. It's gonna thin out the lemon flavor a little bit and it's just gonna be perfect. If you make this at home, you'll see. Later on, I'm gonna make a slurry to thicken the filling with two tablespoons or 20 grams of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. But that is coming later in the recipe. Now all I have to do is add the sugar to the pineapple. Like I said, this is frozen. It is not thawed. We're going to cook it so you do not have to thaw it. Add the sugar, the lemon juice, the lemon zest. Like I said, the lemon is really going to help to bring out the flavor, just like with blueberries or strawberries. And one cup of water. Now I'm going to turn on the heat to high and wait for this to come to a boil. My fresh pineapple, sugar, water, and lemon have now been on high heat for maybe seven minutes or so, maybe 10. And as you can see, the mixture is now coming to a boil. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn down the heat and gas mark six out of six to gas mark three out of six. So just down to medium. And now I'm going to continue cooking the pineapple for 10 minutes. The filling for my pineapple cobbler has now been cooking on medium heat for 10 minutes. Like I said, I brought it to a boil on high heat. And when it started to get some bubbles around the edges, I turned it down to medium. I've just been stirring occasionally, maybe two or three times a minute since then. I really haven't been trying to mash the pineapple because I do want it to look like a pineapple cobbler with chunks of pineapple, not crushed pineapple. And it is going to go into the oven and cook a bit more. So it's probably going to break down a bit, but the very big chunks, I did try to break them up like this. Now I'm going to add the thickener. 
Like I said, I'm going to make a slurry, two tablespoons of water, and then two tablespoons of cornstarch, 20 grams. I am not going to add the cornstarch directly to the pineapple filling because pineapple, or excuse me, cornstarch does not like to be added to hot liquids. So whenever you add cornstarch to thicken something, make a slurry with water off to the side, then add that to what you want to thicken. Now I'm just going to add that in and then stir and this should start to thicken very soon. And as you can see, it's now thickened. So I am going to turn off the heat. Took maybe 20 seconds, I'm gonna turn off the heat. And now this is done. Now it's time to work on the pie crust for this pineapple cobbler. For an eight by eight casserole dish, I am going to use two nine inch pie crusts. I'm using homemade, but you could definitely use store-bought. You could do a lot of things with a cobbler. You could do a solid top, lattice top, dumplings, no dumplings, a solid bottom. I think this time I'm going to do a bottom crust with just a few dumplings and then a lattice top. But like I said, you can do whatever you want. This is an eight by eight casserole dish that I already buttered. I'm going to unroll one of the pie crusts. And I'm simply going to do this. To put a pie crust into a dish, just leave it attached to one of the pieces of plastic and just flip it over like that. Put it in the dish like that. Press it down. A little thin there. And make sure you press it down into the dish. And then where it looks like it's either thin or it's not as um, high up the sides, like over here, just Take your knife like that and cut off some of the pie crust and put it where it needs to be. This does not have to be perfect. This is very rustic. So if it's a little bit higher or lower on one side, that is totally fine. I finished putting in the bottom crust. As you can see, it's now about, I would say, a quarter of an inch from the top all the way around the 8x8 casserole dish. Now I'm going to par-bake the crust. I'm going to put it into the oven for five minutes just to cook it a little bit so that the bottom doesn't get soggy. Honestly, if you forget to do this, it's probably going to be okay. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to par-bake it. I'm going to take a fork and poke some holes in it here and there, maybe seven to ten times just to prevent air bubbles from forming. Now I'm gonna put it into the oven just like this, not gonna weigh it down for five minutes at 350, and then I'll bring you back. Now it's time to work on the top. I am going to do a lattice top, so I'm gonna just cut this other nine inch pie crust into strips, but in order to do that, I do need a square crust, and the bits of crust off to the side that are outside of that square, I'm going to add as dumplings. So if you've never had a Southern style cobbler before, dumplings are literally just small pieces of dough that are added to the fruit filling. Notice they don't all have to be the same size. They can be different sizes. I am not going to add a ton of dumplings because I think that with the bottom crust, a lot of dumplings would just be too much. I added the pie crust dumplings to the pineapple filling and then poured everything into the dish with the pie crust. I would say I added 
between a quarter and a third of a cup of pie crust. As you can see, most of the outside part of the square I added. Now I'm just going to add the lattice top. I'm going to cut the remaining pie crust into strips. I'm going to say they're going to be between three quarters of an inch and an inch thick. If they're a half of an inch thick, that's fine. If they're a little bit less, that's okay too. You just don't want some to be gigantic and some to be tiny. But bigger strips are going to be easier to handle. So I recommend making bigger strips. I also recommend keeping your pie crust in the refrigerator because colder pie crust is easier to handle. Now I'm literally just going to lift the crust off of the wax paper and put it in, or excuse me, on top of the filling. There's really no set number, but I am going to place them the width of one pie crust strip apart. Now I'm just going to lay over the second layer. Like this. Nice and easy. If you don't want to do strips, you could literally just take your pie crust when it's still attached to the wax paper and flip it over on top of the casserole dish with the filling and you could put on a solid top. If you do put on a solid top, I recommend, or not I recommend, it's pretty much necessary. You have to cut slits in it, just like with a pie. If you don't, then the air pocket that is going to form underneath the crust is probably going to make it look domed and it's gonna look weird. So if you put on a solid top, just cut some slits. There, push it down here and there. This is homemade, old fashioned. It does not have to be perfect whatsoever. So if you mess up like over here, that's totally fine. Now for my finishing touch. For all my fruit pies and cobblers, I like to add a little bit of sugar on top. I have one tablespoon of light brown sugar and one tablespoon of white sugar. I'm just mixing them together really quickly and I am going to sprinkle them on top. And now the cobbler is ready for the oven. I just pulled my pineapple cobbler out of the oven. It was in at 350 Fahrenheit uncovered for 50 minutes. Five zero. I was really curious about this, so I couldn't wait to try it. When I took the first bite, I knew that my pineapple cobbler with fresh pineapple recipe was a success. Honestly, this cobbler was absolutely delicious. Honestly, this was very similar to my pineapple pie. If you haven't seen that video, make sure that you do. First of all, I really like the appearance. I think that the lattice top was really well done and it gave this cobbler an old fashioned southern look. The pie crust turned perfectly golden brown and with the little bit of juice that bubbled up in the oven, it was perfect. In terms of flavor, it was almost exactly the same as the pineapple pie which shouldn't be a surprise because the ingredients are basically the same. And just as in the pie, I was really surprised by how strong the pineapple flavor was. In both cases, I think that the lemon juice and lemon zest help to bring out the pineapple flavor. As I've said in other videos, lemon does the same in berry pies and berry cobblers. So if you make a lot of fruit pies and cobblers, but you don't add lemon, try adding some lemon. It'll help bring out the flavor. This was my first time making this cobbler. And just like with the pie, I knew I would have to add extra water to make it juicy. And with this cobbler, I was a bit unsure as to how much water to add. Now that I've cut the first slice, you can see that the cobbler held together pretty well. 
Maybe not as well as some of my other cobblers, but I was fine with that. If you want to reduce the water by maybe two tablespoons, you can, but honestly, I don't think that playing with the recipe just to make it a little bit more solid is really worth it because a cobbler is supposed to be juicy anyway, and this wasn't soupy, and in terms of flavor, it was perfect. I also really like the color of the filling. As I said earlier in the video, my goal was to have a bright yellow filling, and that is what I got. If you've seen some of my other fruit cobblers, in which I add dumplings to the filling, you'll probably notice that I didn't add quite as many dumplings this time. And honestly, I think it turned out better. Some of those other cobblers, looking back, I think I might have added too many dumplings, but with this one, it was fine. And if you're unsure about the dumplings, you can definitely leave them out. Although I personally really like lattice tops for cobblers, you can definitely just do a solid top if you want. But if you do use a solid top, make sure that you cut some air vents so that the steam can escape. I also really like the little bit of extra crunch from the two tablespoons of sugar that I sprinkled on top. If you've never done that before, it's a very nice touch to your cobblers, so I highly recommend it. One thing I did want to point out is that just with any other fruit pie or cobbler, I highly suggest that you bake it on top of a cookie sheet or in my case a pizza pan because if it does boil over in the oven, it's a lot easier to clean a cookie sheet than it is to clean the bottom of your oven. Like I already said, this pineapple cobbler with fresh pineapple recipe was an absolute success, so there really isn't anything that I would change. Honestly, this was very similar to the pie, which shouldn't be a surprise because they're both pineapple. And really the only difference was that this cobbler had a lattice top and it was juicier inside. And just like with the pineapple pie, I was actually really surprised by just how much this cobbler reminded me of peach cobbler. So if you like southern style peach cobbler, but you want something different, I highly recommend this pineapple cobbler. It would be perfect for Mother's Day, Sunday dinner, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or just because. Using fresh or frozen pineapple is absolutely crucial in this, so do not use canned. Although it's perfect on its own, it's also really good with some ice cream, as you can see here. If you're looking for something a bit different that still has that old-fashioned southern feel to it, definitely give my pineapple cobbler with fresh pineapple and pie crust recipe a try. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.